we are looking at angiosperms. And one of the big developments for angiosperms is that they produce flowers so that they can attract pollinators or specialize the way that they disperse and receive pollen. Another big adaptation for angiosperms is that they produce fruits. And we think of fruits as this very specific thing that we get at the grocery store, we pick off a tree, but all flowers turn into fruits. And that doesn't really align with that definition of fruits that we have. And many of the fruits that we call a certain name or um, these plant-based products that we call something commonly in our society, that's not its actual botanical name. So I'm gonna turn your world upside down just a little bit. In this lecture, we're gonna look at fruit types and dispersal of those fruit types. I really like this infographic. Um, oh, I can't remember what this is from, but I don't have access to it. I do remember that, but I have this picture and this shows the evolutionary history of citrus and how humans have interacted with citrus and done selective breeding to produce many of the different types of citrus that we have now. So first we'll look at parts of the fruit. The ripened ovary is composed of three layers. Together, these layers are called the pericarp, and we're gonna use these layers to identify fruit types. So I'm gonna draw a cross section through a um, fruit that you might be used to seeing, and maybe it'll just be kind of a so-so cross section here. Okay, so, here we have a cross section through a peach. I guess more of a long section. So in this long section, we have the seed in the middle, which if you've ever broken open a peach pit, the seed looks kind of like an almond, and that's because peaches and almonds are related. They're in the same group, which they are in the rose family. And that's why cyanide smells like almonds because it's produced also by the rose family. So here is the seed that's covered by the seed coat and we would have our developing embryo inside. Surrounding the seed in a peach would be this hardened pit structure, right? So that hardened pit is part of the pericarp and this is called the endocarp. It's on the inside endo and carp means fruit so inside fruit the fleshy part of the peach which we'll do here in green you know just like a peach is <laughs> this fleshy part here is the mesocarp or mesocarp it's in the middle so meso think mesophyll um, that's the middle fruit and the outermost layer We'll just have it in black because there it is in black. On a peach is very thin. This is the exocarp. Think like exoskeleton. So the outside part of the fruit. So the exocarp, mesocarp, and endocarp are all components of the pericarp. So all of those together make the pericarp Sometimes they're indistinct layers. Sometimes they're all kind of indistinguishable in just a single thing that we'll call the pericarp. Peri means around. And so how these layers look um, and physically are is going to determine what type of fruit we have. So a peach is a very specific type of fruit called a droop, where it has this hardened stony endocarp, a fleshy mesocarp, and a thin exocarp. Many fruits, um, will have a different type of arrangement and so they'll have a different name. So here we can see a picture of a peach, a little bit better than mine, but mine was close, right? And we have the seed in the middle, we have that stony endocarp, then we have the fleshy mesocarp, and the thin exocarp. And those particular characteristics make this a droop, but they can look different. So they're just identified by, like with everything else in plants, where they are. Endocarp is innermost, mesocarp is between the endo and exocarp, exocarp's on the outside. So let's look at types of fruits and we're gonna start with dry fruits. So these are things that you probably wouldn't have thought of as fruits before, and they are indehiscent. So the term dehiscent means to dry and open. So it 
dehisses to open. So when this fruit dries at maturity, it would be dry and then it would open up on its own. You wouldn't have to open it. So that's dehiscent, I should say. Indehiscent means that these fruits are gonna dry but they're gonna have some other mechanism for dispersing their seeds. They're not going to open on their own. This first one is an akene. So an akene you have probably seen most often on the outside of a strawberry. So here is where your mind starts to get blown. Strawberries aren't berries. They are um, this sort of accessory fruit and the actual fruit of the strawberry are these little seed looking things on the outside that are akenes. So an akene has a thin pericarp. We can't really distinguish the individual layers. It's just this thin single coating. Usually it's relatively soft, but in the case of a sunflower seed, that coating is a little bit harder. You can still crack it open. There's a single seed inside and the pericarp is attached to that seed just at a single point. So we can kind of easily peel that pericarp off. So examples of akenes are on the outside of a strawberry, here at the base of this um, dandelion, we would have an akene, and then sunflower seeds. A samara is an akene that has wings. So this is a samara here, I'll use a different color. This is a samara. This is where the akene is, and then it has this winged structure. So it's a specialized akene for aerial dispersal, right? It's gonna be dispersed on the wind. This particular Samara that we're looking at is sort of two Samaras stuck together, and we'll learn the term in a little bit, what this um, fruits that break apart are called. So we have a Samara is an akene with a wing. So maple helicopters are one example of a uh, Samara, which is also, this one is a schizocarp or a schizocarp because it's going to break into pieces. Think schizophrenia, where your mind kind of breaks into multiple personalities. Other examples are ashes and hop trees. These are things we don't really have uh, so much around here. A caryopsis is really similar to an akene, and these you're going to be intimately familiar with because most of our crops have a caryopsis fruit. So everything in the grain family has a caryopsis. So this is the fruit of the, the grasses. Uh, corn has a caryopsis, wheat has a caryopsis. When you um, pop corn kernels, you're taking a caryopsis, which is a fruit. Um, so when you eat popcorn, you're eating fruit. And that um, fluffy part of that popcorn is the endosperm. So here we're looking at a caryopsis and we have the pericarp, which is thin, just like an akene but instead of being attached in one place, it's fused to the seed coat. So you can't just pull the pericarp off in this one. Like in a sunflower seed, you can crack the pericarp off, get the seed out. This one, you can't really easily remove that. So we have to have um, a lot of kind of processes to get the pericarp off of our grains. Next one is also a single seed. So we have this single large seed, and then the pericarp again is all fused together and we can't really differentiate those layers, but it is thick and stony. So it is difficult to um, crack open. So this is like an akene where it's not really fused to the seed. It's not, I don't even know if it's fused in a single point. So we could easily peel it off if it were peelable, but it is tough, right? So we have to crack them open. So you might be thinking of like walnuts and almonds as all these types of nuts. They are very similar to nuts in the way that they look because of the way that they arrive to us at the grocery store. But walnuts and almonds and many of the things that we call nuts are actually just the endocarp and the seed inside and the rest of the fruit has been removed. So the only true nuts that we have, um, there's a few other examples. I think chestnuts might also be true nuts, um, but hazelnuts and acorns are the ones that we would kind of typically see around here um, that are true nuts. So a few of these fruit categories can overlap with each other. Like we saw, a samara can also be a schizocarp or a schizocarp um, if it is going to break apart. So this is kind of a general term for any kind of fruit that is going to break apart at maturity. 
and it breaks apart at the individual carpels. So this would be um, a fruit that had multiple fused carpels that's then breaking apart um, as it matures. So maple helicopters are an example of that. Um, mallows are also called cheese weeds because their fruits look like a little cheese wheel and each of these compartments will break apart once it's mature and each one will have seeds inside. Another example is a geranium where it has, and I showed this in the last lecture video, this ballistic seed dispersal where it starts out as this kind of solid tube, but you can see these um, seams here where it's going to split open. And as it splits open, as it dries, then it shoots up and hurls those seeds out. So it splits apart at maturity. And that brings us nicely to our dehiscent fruits. So fruits that are dry, not fleshy, and that are going to break open at maturity. The first one of these is a follicle. So a follicle is one carpal that splits open at a single seam. So here you can see we have a single flower with multiple carpels. Each of these carpels is a follicle and each has a seam right here where it is going to open. And that is going to happen after it dries out. So we can see that later stage, this is a delphinium on top, um, and then we have a columbine on bottom. Uh, they're closely related to each other. They're both in the ranunculus family related to buttercups. So each of them produces follicles, and these follicles I'll use a different color, split open at a single seam at maturity. So kind of like a purse where they just open on one side and the seeds will kind of fall out or be shaken out or get blown out by the wind. This is very similar, but different from a legume. So we're used to legumes at the store and you might think of them as both fleshy or dry. But at maturity, legumes are dry. So if you leave beans on the vine or um, peas on the vine, they will dry out and split open at maturity to release their seeds. So legumes, this fruit of the bean family, has two seams. So instead of just splitting open on one side, it splits open on both sides and opens entirely, um, more like a, a lid in a box. So we have one carpel still. It might have many seeds, but it's still one carpel. It's not um, fused carpels together. And then it splits open at two seams to release those seeds and the fruit is dry. This is kind of a cool thing about peanuts. A lot of people don't know that peanuts are legumes, which they are. If you think about it, it's very similar looking to a bean and they are below ground. They're the subterranean fruits. So the flowers are above ground, but they're really close to the ground. Once they get pollinated, they start to drive themselves under the ground as they form their fruits. A capsule is a very broad term. This is where you have several fused carpels that are going to split open at maturity. Carpels can look very different from each other, so these are just a few examples. So we have multiple carpels. You can see here, multiple carpels. Again, multiple carpels that were all fused together, so they're part of the same fruit, and they're splitting open at maturity. So with our cotton, we can see very obviously it's splitting open at maturity. With poppies, the openings are small, so it doesn't split entirely open and just release those seeds everywhere. Instead, it kind of splits open just in this small tear, and each carpel has a little tear along the top, and then it waves in the wind and disperses those little seeds like a little pepper shaker. Now we'll look at fleshy fruits, which are more similar to the fruits that you might be familiar with. Berries. Berry is a really um, wide category of fruits. It's sort of like this umbrella category that encompasses some of the other categories that we'll talk about. Here I say that berries are many seeded. Most typically they're many seeded, but you can have apparently single celled, or not single celled, single seeded berries. Like an avocado, could be considered a berry because of its endocarp. Okay, anyway, so with our dry fruits, 
our pericarp was all sort of fused together. With our fleshy fruits, this is where we're distinguishing between the individual components of that pericarp. So in a berry, you have this thin exocarp that you could easily kind of bite through. You have a thick, fleshy mesocarp. And then you have many seeds, and the endocarp would sort of be surrounding these seeds. Um, but it's not going to be stony. So examples of berries are tomatoes, kiwis, blueberries, um, bananas in their um, kind of traditional environment <laughs> before we had um, altered them so much would be more of a berry. So many of the uh, fruit types that we love to eat are berries because they have this uh, fleshy mesocarp. A pepo is a modified type of berry where instead of having um, an exocarp that is easy to get through, it's more of a rind, right? So think about melons, um, pumpkins, and bananas, where they have this sort of thicker exterior exocarp. But the fleshy mesocarp in those um, seeds in the center without a stony endocarp, that's what kind of makes this uh, still like a berry. So if you take a berry and you make its exterior a little tougher, then it becomes a pepo. Examples are pumpkins and squash. Here we have our beautiful picture of a cantaloupe where you can see these nice locules. Oh, I'm dividing them up wrong though. <laughs> you can see these nice locules. I think that's how they're divided. And the funiculus and the placenta. Another modified berry is a Hesperidium. So all of our citrus are um, Hesperidia. Um, here we have an orange and we're looking at a nice section through that orange. So the exocarp again is um, rind-like, but it also is uh, fused with the mesocarp. So both the exocarp and mesocarp together now form this leathery rind. The other weird thing about Hesperidia is that the kind of juicy part of the fruit are trichomes that are filled with juice inside of the locules. So all of this juicy stuff, these are just juice filled hairs inside of the locules and then the seeds would be contained within these locules. So this is still a berry. Um, this, I believe, this kind of stuff that coats the sections, that would be the endocarp. And then here we have our mesocarp and exocarp. So you can think of the um, like zest of an orange as the exocarp and then that pith as the mesocarp. So examples are any of the citrus, oranges, lemons, grapefruits, pomelos, etc. A pome is a fruit that comes from um, the rose family. So this is where the fleshy part of the fruit is made from a hypanthium. So if you look at an apple and this long section through an apple, this is this kind of fleshy part. That's the hypanthium. Once you get into the core of the apple, that is the ovary. Uh, so instead of being um, this fleshy ovary, we have a fleshy hypanthium and then this kind of papery ovary. So that is called a poem. And you can tell that we have this sort of um, either inferior or semi-inferior ovary because the pedicel is on one side and the remnants of the flower are on the other side. So that tells you um, that we have either an inferior or a semi-inferior ovary. So start looking for that in your fruits. Do you have a kind of scar on both sides of it or is there only a scar on one side? So a poem, you're thinking fleshy part is a hypanthium and then the papery core um, is the pericarp. Examples of poems would be apples and pears. Droops are another common fruit type. Maybe my favorite fruit type? I don't know. Um, possibly berries. So a droop has a thin exocarp, a thick mesocarp, usually fleshy, but it doesn't have to be fleshy, and we'll see an example of that in a minute, and a stony endocarp. They also have a single large seed. So a peach is a really good example of what a droop is. And a lot of things um, that are also in the rose family. Um, so apples and pears are in the rose family, but so are peaches, cherries, plums, all of those stone fruits. 
there are also dry droops. So examples of dry droops are walnuts. So here's our walnut with the shell, right? That's that stony endocarp. There's a husk that's around that that's composed of the exocarp and the mesocarp, and then that gets peeled off as we get them uh, from the store. So if you see walnuts growing outside, um, you can peel that husk off. Um, when I've done it before, it's stained my hands really yellow, so be careful of your clothes. Um, but it's a droop as opposed to a nut because of that husk that gets peeled off. Same thing goes for coconuts. The coconut that we get at the store is the seed surrounded by this stony endocarp. The husk of it gets taken off usually before it comes to the store. And that husk is specially designed so that it can float, not specially designed, specially adapted so that it can float on water. So those are our major fruit types. Now we're gonna look at um, sort of ways that we can um, have these other categories. So aggregate fruits are when you have a single flower that had many free carpels and those many free carpels all become part of the same fruit. So here we have an aggregate of droplets. This is also from the rose family. Many of the fruits that we get at the store come from the rose family, very delicious family. So blackberries, raspberries, um, all of these kind of lumpy berries that we have aren't actually berries. They're aggregates of droplets. Each of the little circles here is an ovary with a style and stigma. And that ovary um, is one carpel. And so we have many free carpels here and they get pollinated and fertilized. And then those ovaries develop into little droplets. So each of these is a little droplet and has one stony seed inside that you might get stuck in your teeth and all of these little hairy kind of structures that are sticking off of blackberries and raspberries, those are the little styles and stigmas that are still attached. We can also have an aggregate of achenes. So strawberries, also from the rose family, are formed from the fleshy receptacle. So here at the base of all of these free carpels, we have a receptacle that starts to swell up once those um, ovaries get fertilized. So the receptacle where all of the floral parts attach starts to swell up inside the flower. All of the rest of these flower parts fall off and the carpels remain stuck to that developing receptacle and they form into achenes. So each of these is an achene and we can still see its little style and stigma attached. This is the calyx. So all of these sepals, that little green ring of uh, leafy structures that you have on the end of your strawberry, that's the calyx that still remains attached. So similarly to aggregates, but different, we can have multiple fruits. So instead of developing from a single flower with many free carpels, we have many florets that all develop into the same inflorescence or into the same fruit. And this is a rare fruit type. Examples of multiple fruits that you might see are pineapples and mulberries. So a pineapple, you can see each of these is an individual in, uh, little floret in a spike inflorescence. So here we have this growing apical meristem, um, our receptacle where all of our floret, uh, florets attach. And then here we would have the individual florets, which each contribute to making this delicious fruit. So it's a spike in fluorescence that develops into a single fruit, and that's what makes it a multiple fruit. Mulberries look a lot like blackberries or kind of elongated blackberries, loganberries, but those are formed from single flowers. Here we have an inflorescence of many individual flowers in a catkin. And these individual female florets are going to um, each develop into part of a larger fruit. So instead of developing into individual fruits, they develop into a larger fruit that we call a multiple fruit. Again, with the larger categories, we can have accessory fruits. So we'll see that these categories can overlap with each other. 
Accessory fruits are fruits where the fleshy part is made from something other than the ovary. We've already seen a couple of these. Strawberries are an aggregate of achenes, and they're also an accessory fruit because the fleshy part of the fruit, the thing that we think of as the strawberry, is made up from the swollen receptacle. So this part of the flower where all of the floral whorls attach. Rose hips are another type of accessory fruit where the fleshy part, oh, it's so hard to find colors that work here. The fleshy part is made up of a swollen hypanthium. So that is the part that is trying to attract animals by being red, uh, has a lot of vitamin C, um, they're tasty. And we can see that we have this semi-inferior ovary because the floral parts are on one side and this, the pedicel um, is on the other side or the peduncle. So inside, of this swollen hypanthium, we have an aggregate of achenes. So again, we have an aggregate that is also an accessory fruit.